do roll call, please. Uh, Chairman Harley is not here. Vice Chairman Margiotta. Here. Uh, I'm here. Mr. Hughes. Yeah, yes. There you go. There we go. You're all talking. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Reichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Nope. Mr. Homicki. No. Mr. Dean. No. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Yes. Ms. Silver. Here. Mr. Silver. <laughs> it's okay. Inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so we have nine, so everyone's seated. Uh, so we have two public hearings. The public hearing for 1952-17Z uh, uh, has been rescheduled for September 5th. So if you are here for the fraternal organization at 500B Slicing Highway, it's been rescheduled. So we'll move on to public hearing 3.2, uh, application number 1954-17Z, Mohegan vs. Uh, PV, uh, Wethersfield LLC, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2, permitted uses, change of use to a commissionary, commissary uh, kitchen and retail sale of food products. Will the applicant uh, come up, please? And this is a public hearing, so we'll have the applicant come up, and then we'll open it up to public comments and we'll allow the applicant again to rebut any, any comments and then we'll uh, possibly close the hearing tonight and vote. Well, for the record, will you state your name and address? Good evening. My name is Robin Pearson. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Alter and Pearson in Glastonbury, Connecticut, and I'm pleased to be here this evening on behalf of the applicant. Um, I will leave with you the mailing notices uh, we've previously provided your staff with the materials with regard to the mailing, and I have all the green receipts that I'll leave with the uh, secretary. Um, also, I just want to note that the sign was properly posted on the property with regard to this public hearing. I'd like to introduce the persons that are here this evening on behalf of the applicant before we get into our presentation, and they are Jeffrey Higgins, who is the Director of Implementation, Mohegan Holding Company, LLC, in Uncasville. And with him is Chef Sean De La Rosa, and we uh, commonly refer to him as Chef Sean, so when he makes his presentation, I will probably do so also. Nina Lipinski is the architect with uh, Tecton Architects in Hartford, Connecticut. Haley Bush is our, um, our engineer. She is with the firm of Puss and O'Neill in Manchester, Connecticut. Larry Severance is here also. Larry is or will be the general manager of this particular um, Pasta Vita retail space should the application be approved. And I will just note that for this evening's presentation, we will not have everybody getting up, but they are here to answer questions, especially with regard to any technical ones that you may have. But the, um, the presenters will be Jeffrey Higgins and uh, Sean De La Rosa this evening. So our reason for being here tonight is that we need a special permit for this particular change in use from retail to a uh, combined retail pasta vita store space with an adjacent commissary kitchen use and it's for that purpose that we are here a commissary kitchen is a licensed kitchen facility usually it's commercially outfitted for typically the centralized preparation of food products and for subsequent distribution either to an adjacent site or to other sites that are not um, located on the property. The term is commonly used for cottage, mobile, artisanal, or gourmet food operations where the food is to be sold, um, at, uh, prepared rather, at central licensed kitchen to ensure safety, consistency, freshness, efficiency of operations, and in fact allows for cost benefits which can then be passed on to the consumer or the purchaser of the foods that are prepared there. And in this instance, the food products for sale at Pasta Vita are for the store that's adjacent to this commissary 
and um, will be made in this particular commissary kitchen and will also be distributed to other Pasta Vita sites of which at the moment there's only one. Uh, the space for which this application is proposed was previously occupied by casual mail. It's, uh, the space has been empty for some time. This commissary kitchen will be located to the rear of the proposed retail use and the total space involved with both the retail store and the commissary kitchen is 6,700 square feet, approximately, of which the retail component will be the smaller element. It's uh, approximately 1,226 1, square feet, and the commissary is approximately 5,540 square feet. And it is the addition of the commissary kitchen use that necessitates our being here this evening to petition you for a special permit approval. And that is because it is a production operation and it is therefore categorized under your regulations as a manufacturing activity, which is allowed within the existing zone which is a regional commercial or CR zone, but does require the special use permit application. If they were seeking only to have the retail store use at this particular use uh, location, the most they would need would be a site plan approval to be able to go into the space. So section 5.2 contains your requirements for a special permit in the RC zone. And uh, we will certainly spend a little bit of time at the end of our presentation talking to you about the ways in which this application meets the requirements that you must take under advisement when you decide whether or not this application is worthy for approval, which we certainly think it is. So as far as our presentation format, um, Jeffrey Higgins will first tell you about the Pasta Vita concept. And We'll discuss for you the operations primarily of the uh, commissory kitchen, which may be a little unusual in terms of uses that you are um, have had experience with in the past. He'll talk about the hours of both the commissary and the retail store and why this site in particular was chosen. And then we would like to have Chef Sean come up and describe a little bit about the Pasta Vita products and why he too is very excited about the possibility of coming to Weathersfield with this operation. So with that, Jeff, would you come on up? Hello everyone, thank you so much for having us tonight. Um, first I'd like to speak um, to the relationship with the Pasta Vida to the Mohegan tribe. Um, I work for Mohegan Holdings. Uh, I have actually worked for the Mohegan tribe for 19 years. Uh, I previously worked at Mohegan Sun Casino as general manager of Tuscany um, and other food outlets. I'm sure you're familiar. Uh, so Mohegan Holdings is an arm of diversification for the tribe. Uh, and Pasta Vida is one of the, uh, one of the um, branches that we're actually really excited to open. Um, what it is is a concept of gourmet food that we sell strictly to go. It's not a restaurant per se. Uh, it's the ability to take these items that are made by gourmet chefs to your house, you put them in the oven, you prepare them to the specifications, and you are able to enjoy a gourmet meal with very little preparation on, uh, for the consumer. Um, the other locations currently, there's a location at the casino, which is again strictly retail. Chef Sean actually works in production currently in a casino kitchen, and the idea is to get him into a, a, a concept, into a commissary where we can expand on that uh, to be able to serve up to five locations. So the commissary that we, we like to build here isn't infinite. Um, it's only gonna serve the five locations. Um, production hours are essentially business hours. The front commissary will open about 9 a.m. and will close anywhere between 9 and 10 p.m. The production facility, actual production, would take place between 8 a.m. and 4 or 5 p.m. So it's no overnight, it's not going to be obtrusive in any way. Uh, one thing I would like to point out, um, again I've worked for the tribe for 19 years, we're very, very community oriented. 
we like to help our neighbors we want to be a good neighbor we take any concerns very very seriously and we address them as soon as we possibly can uh, we like to do outreach programs with the community to help fundraising and many other aspects and basically try to be as good a neighbor as we can we really liked this location because of just Weathersfield in general I think really fits um, kind of what our concept I think people in this town can enjoy some good food uh, and we're looking forward to, to serving you for many years to come um, as far as I know there was some concerns about like truck deliveries and things of that nature our delivery van is a transit it's not a box truck it's not a tractor trailer it's just one of those small vans and we'll essentially be doing deliveries uh, loading up about 8 a.m and we'll be delivering to any other locations that we're going to open going forward uh, and then that truck will just sit idle for the rest of the day so the deliveries for that truck is just in the morning they'll go out come back and that'll be the extent of the deliveries for the truck um, as far as other deliveries that we're receiving for food product uh, it'll be anywhere between two and three times a week uh, will it will receive deliveries anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and those trucks would would then be gone for that so there isn't a lot of um, noise or idling or or any length of time that the trucks are going to be sitting in the back of our location um, inside it's just it's all fresh food we receive fresh vegetables fresh meats prepare them on on location uh, follow time and temperature and then obviously we would load the uh, front retail area and then we would ship out to the other ones um, and again as far as being a good neighbor it, it's just paramount to us you know we want you to welcome us we want to be and, and assuage any kind of challenges you feel you may have um, any other any questions at this time uh, would you just comment a little bit about the number of employees you oh using? certainly so uh, again we're open only during the day we'll have up to 15 people working in the commissary and that's dishwashers it'll be the chef an administrative person working at a desk and then we'll have various levels of cooks and prep cooks uh, for the front retail section we'll probably have upwards um, no more than five people at a time uh, parking for them will take place in the back so they'll park in the back behind where Marshall's is and they'll come in through the back door The only other comment uh, you and I talked about had to do with the idling of trucks and you made a commitment to yeah and I've touched on that a little bit again there will be, there will be no idling of trucks uh, it's just any kind of larger trucks which we use city line and if you're familiar with city line they're just a box truck it's like a 24 foot box truck um, and they'll be dropping off and again no more than 60 minutes anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour dropping off pallets we will bring the pallets inside and then the trucks will exit and there's no discernible noise for our vans because again like I, I touched on it's just like 7 a, 8 a.m. in the morning they'll be loading up and we actually have the ability the truck will have the ability to plug into the building so the truck doesn't need to be running while we're loading it so we'll plug into an electrical outlet start the truck and then drive away so there's no significant time or noise and not in any unreasonable time we're not going to be doing overnight uh, deliveries we're not going to be doing any kind of overnight production it's strictly during business hours thank you Jeff. thank you what will uh, re reserve questions for the end if that makes more sense and now I'd like to ask uh, chef Sean to tell you a little bit about the exciting products that they will be preparing and selling at this location if the application is approved Good evening, everybody. Uh, Sean Delarosa, 1996 Manchester uh, Road, Glastonbury, Connecticut. Um, Pasta Vita started about uh, 20 years ago in Old Saybrook. Um, it really started off as a uh, wholesale ravioli company. And the two owners had noticed that as they were cooking food, people started to wonder what, what they were doing, what that lovely smell was. So they would the neighbors started to come and ask why don't you sell this to us and so that's exactly what they did they put their heads together and said you know what we're going to start sm selling just a few products and it's become uh, a really Connecticut's premier go-to place for for gourmet to go 
Um, Chef Lou is actually a neighbor to Rocky Hill. Um, and they've been in, in Old Saybrook running 20 years. Now, uh, instead of just two or three products, they actually have about 2,500 different products that, that we sell. Uh, we cater to just about everybody, all dietary needs. We can do gluten-free, we do dairy-free, we uh, have def uh, several different kinds of pastas and, and uh, vegetables. Chef Lou is very um, adamant about his ingredients. We use only high quality ingredients. He even tries to use local farmers when he can and uh, he likes to keep uh, everything small and uh, within Connecticut so that um, he, he bears in mind that you know we're all neighbors and we should all help each other. The company is, is very, um, Jeff had touched on this, we are, we are very community oriented. In fact, uh, this, this Friday we have our two year anniversary at, at the Pasta Vida location in Mohegan Sun and um, our, biggest, our big partner is the Alzheimer Association of Connecticut. We're donating 20% of our um, take that day to Alzheimer's. So really it is a, uh, a company that is very involved in the community and uh, I've been a neighbor myself in Glastonbury. I know that we need um, this sort of uh, operation. I think that the people of Weathersfield and surrounding areas are going to take really kind to it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to now uh, submit for you plans that we have prepared. I did send uh, Mr. Gillespie a copy ahead of time. Um, we only finished them today because this was responsive to staff comments which came in at the uh, actually on Friday of last week. Uh, but we think we've responded to everything that staff mentioned as um, a possible concern or something they would like us to address. So I'm submitting a, um, a revised set of plans. It's dated, or they are dated, uh, August 15th on the uh, outside of the plans. And I'll just pass them around for you. Thank you. I'm also going to leave you with a responsive letter. I'll go through it first, and then I'll leave copies with you. But once you have the plan sets, um, in this letter that we've addressed to you, it paraphrases the comments that we received from both Mr. Uh, Gillespie and uh, Derek Greger. And I'd just like to go through um, our response to each one of the comments as we've made the changes on the plans. Uh, first of all, uh, there was a request that we potentially provide parking spaces in front of our door for uh, the, uh, characterized as to-go spaces in, or, uh, in order to accommodate short-term parking for people who come in and come out. I, well, it didn't say specifically, but it did ask for some. Uh, the problem is there, are, there is a lease prohibition against doing this. Um, basically, it's with Marshalls and Home Goods that will not allow spaces to be dedicated within the shopping center to any other use. However, I would note for the record that that, poor, that area of the parking lot is probably the least parked. Um, that's the southern area of the parking lot. And it, we don't expect that there will be any issues in terms of customers for Pasta Vida. And indeed, they wouldn't have chosen this site if they felt that was going to be an issue. Have you talked to the owner? Yes, we have. We brought that issue to the owner, and the owner indicated that as much as they would like to do it, it's not possible given the current lease constraints. So, but we don't think it's going to be a problem. If they were able to do it, uh, they would have allowed us to do it, and we would have liked to do it, but it's not something we can accommodate. So legally, our hands are tied with regard to that. But f also from... Legally? Uh, uh, pardon me? Legally? Legally. How? The, the lease, lease... The lease with Marshalls prohibits it. Prohibits it. Oh, Marshalls insists. Yes. The owner of Marshalls. Marshalls. Yes. But Marshalls allows their customers to park everywhere, including the shopping. Yeah. No, they don't, but that, that's sure. what happens. However, when you consider, and I'll go through the considerations that you have to look at when you decide this application, 
when you realize that this use will probably generate less parking uh, that would have then would have been required uh, with a full retail user there or restaurant uses that are allowed um, the end benefit is going to be on the positive side and I forget exactly how many there are but there are more parking spaces in that shopping center than are required um, for full retail use for the permitted uses in that uh, in under that zoning regulation so uh, the second question for um, related question to this certainly uh, now the people coming in the retail correct side of it, yeah they can't come in the back side because if it's crowded out front because uh, that's different back there yes than the retail the only access is through the front doors to the retail facility for the public yes okay, okay? thank you uh, so the second question or comment was that the rear parking loading pavement is showing t signs of deterioration and we met with the owner and the owner agreed that they will repair the rear parking lot after construction is completed and in and they also put on the record that any potholes in that rear parking area as well as the full shopping center parking lot will be repaired in the spring and every spring so they will follow through on the uh, maintenance of that shopping center parking area the next comment was is there an insert proposed for the catch basin in the rear lot and the answer is yes it will go downstream of the proposed trenching work where sediment may migrate so we've responded to that particular comment from mr. Gillespie next comment in his uh, is review and said the following this application proposes the use of two additional dumpsters without any proposed screening and uh, we took that back to the client and to the landlord and we have now enclosed the two dumpsters in a fixed location next to the loading dock and I you've got the revised plans and it does show that as well as a detail for the screening of those two dumpsters with this application <coughs> The next comment had to do with the rooftop units and there is a rooftop um, layout in the revised plan set there was one in the original set also uh, the comment was that the existing rooftop units already are visible from the Silas Dean Highway and the applicant proposes to relocate one of the units closer to the storefront and proposes a new unit and that is true and while there was no requirement to screen the existing units uh, the applicant was willing to propose a screening wall which this revised set of plans um, details it's 40 feet long it's uh, approximately six feet high and it will be made of the same or uh, it'll be made of hardy plank or a similar type of um, uh, surface material that complements the existing storefront so that what goes that detailed on what page is it on you can see on the rooftop layout yeah I'm just flipping it? yeah it is on page a2 the architectural plan and what you see is a um, a new screening wall and it says proposed rooftop screening location if required there is no detail of the screening wall itself we can submit those but I, I can tell you that uh, it is proposed to be approximately six feet high and made of the hardy plank we will submit that for you. You look like you have an additional question. Yeah, there are some questions on these rooftop screens. We've had other applications, questions concerning ability to withstand wind and uh, you know, that type of thing. There was there were some questions. I'd just like some information on that. Okay, you're definitely beyond uh, my qualifications with regard to that. So I'm going to have to ask. Nina, come on up and do it. 
So that was actually something. Here, will you identify yourself for the record? Sure. Nina Lipinski, Tecton Architects. Um, that is something that definitely came up. We're still in the process of working through what that detail is. We understand that the length of the wall, the 40 feet, might be of concern. Um, due to the height and the length, but we were potentially talking about some slatting or screening or something to allow winds to go through that so that you wouldn't be concerned so much with um, any kind of structural issues. Was it attached to the roof itself? It's attached, correct. So this detail here shows um, it's literally a six foot high wall. This detail actually is at six foot four. Um, it has bracing behind it. Um, we've used this detail many times, have never had any issues. I would still um, take a look in terms of the length of the wall to make sure that we don't need to make modifications to it. But the intent is to have that 40 feet so that it blocks and screens the existing units up there. And it is screwed in directly to the decking, the roof deck above. I will pass this along, but I'll also add that, of course, we will work with town staff and make sure that your engineering department is satisfied with regard to the final specifics Absolutely. as to the design well, please, of that. Please do that. This commission is very concerned because recently the high school looked for a major issue for this commission and the town. Will do. It's Absolutely. Very same matter. Yep. We got one more, right? On the planners, um, lease vehicles will be used and proposed parking should be discussed. And um, I believe we have done that to satisfy his comments. Uh, as was explained to you, as far as the leased vehicle for um, Pasta Vita operations, there will be one in the beginning. They do hope to have more satellite restaurants, up to five, that would be served by this commissary, though I was advised by Mr. Higgins that one van will be enough to service probably up to three satellite sites before they would need to get another vehicle. So we're talking one van, maybe two in the future. Importantly, I'll leave you a uh, plan that's attached to this response that again shows what Mr. Higgins indicated, and that is that there are 20 dedicated or exclusive parking spaces for Pasta Vita, which will be, which are and will be um, dedicated to them to the rear of the Marshall store. That's where the van will park overnight. In the front, you said? No, it's in the back. It's in the back. Yep, and I'll send that along with you to, uh, with this, with these comments. There were three comments from the town engineer. The first was to install a silt fence downstream of the proposed transformer and provide details, and this has been added to the plans. Uh, we were requested to add a note to the catch basin detail on CD501, specifying that sack shall be emptied when six inches to 12 inches of sediment has collected and will be inspected every one to two weeks after major rain events. And this note has been added to that plan. The final comment, um, staff recommended moving the grease trap further away from the doors to the store. And we talked about this after receiving the comment. And the location of that grease trap was specifically requested by the Metropolitan District. Uh, so the MDC has requested that the grease traps be placed as close as possible to the doors and our, our uh, design team also concurred with this um, design decision. It should be noted they will be cleaned monthly and either before or after the store is open, before it's open and in operation and after it's closed in order to minimize any impact associated with proximity to the doors. So any cleaning operations will be done only when it's not, um, the business is not ongoing at that location. So I have 15 copies or sufficient copies for you of those responses. I'm going to send them around. And again, the plan that shows those dedicated parking spaces where Pasta Vita employees and the one van will park um, when they're on the site. I have some questions though, along this line. Um, I'm a non-engineer. I understand what three traps are, I think, but I would like some explanation by you or your 
staff, engineering staff, and we had a number of engineers on here, of course, on the commission. But why all of a sudden, and this is a different operation with a large kitchen, and so I understand the probably buildup of, of that type of accumulation from that kitchen operation compared to a regular restaurant, even a large one. But this grease trap up thing that is a big part of your, the need to you at coming here, a good part of it, I see, and uh, long drainage lines as well. Uh, why is all this required all of a sudden? I know the, I don't know about the sanitary situation out in that side of steam, but I know the drainage in the past has been an issue with some a large uh, developments along here, same area. Okay, well, I have uh, Jeff Higgins here just to talk about it. Um, grease traps have become common practice just to prevent any kind of grease overflow from going into the public sanitary system. What a grease trap is, it's a thousand gallon tank that sits below the level of the ground and there's a series of baffles that separate the gray water from grease. Now all of the sanitaries and drains don't flow through that. The, the, the vast, the majority of uh, the, the uh, lines that go through the grease trap are for our three bay sinks, which are pot washing sinks, and our dish machine. And again, the idea is those contain the most grease, and what happens is when the, the sanitary flows through the grease trap, the grease rises, the gray water goes to the bottom, and it flows so that gray water is going into your, san into your sewer systems and not grease. So what we do is monthly go in and pump it out, and we actually pump out the gray water as well, all the way to the bottom, so we ensure that the trap is entirely clean. So it's sort of like septic systems. And, uh, exactly. Yeah, the idea is is not is to prevent any grease from going into your current sanitary systems, which overwhelms. In years ago, it would just go through sewer systems, and then obviously there were problems afterwards. But the engineers are starting to require it. Maybe the town staff. So Many towns are are. I just hadn't it's, seen a lot of it. Yeah, it's wondering. standard. We haven't had anything quite like this, but you know, I took. Yeah, it's, it's to prevent any kind of damage to, or grease buildup in your, your current um, wastewater system. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. And it looks like Haley has something to add to that. Um, this is Haley Bush with Fuston O'Neill. I'm the civil engineer on the project. And grease traps are required by the public health code. And so that's why we've put our grease trap in. Thank you. All of a sudden, ma'am, are they starting to do it on major operations like this? Or what? Um, they've definitely been in since I started working, so within the past 10 years. Okay. They've been in the health code. Big emphasis on it, though. Yeah. Thank you. Unless there are any other questions at this point, I'd just like to go through the considerations that you have to keep in mind when you decide this application. Uh, obviously, uh, the standards of Article 8, Section 8, Special Permit Criteria are relevant. Uh, the first is whether or not this is a suitable location, and we would suggest that given that the use and activity uh, that's being proposed with this application, uh, as that is indeed allowed within the zone, and certainly the front part of the uh, particular site is a retail use, which is already established for this particular site. And with the presence of a loading dock and access to the Silas Steen Highway being sufficient, um, the fact that this is an established shopping center use right now argues uh, towards the suitability of this location for the proposed uh, Pasta Vita uh, commissary kitchen and retail use. It's compatible with the neighborhood. You already have the building has been constructed. We're not proposing to change anything other than um, signage. I should add for the record that the signage has been reviewed and has been approved by staff. Uh, I ask that that signage letter be placed within your, uh, within your record. You can see on the elevations that were submitted on the original plans and the revised plans what the signage is going to look like and it's certainly compatible with what exists on the building. The proposed use is not going to alter any essential characteristics of the area. Again, the front remains retail and the commissary use is a discrete operation in the rear of the building. Truck deliveries and shipping are minimal and will, we believe, not be impactful at all with regard to neighboring properties. 
uh, especially when you consider it's de minimis compared to the operations that currently exist with uh, Marshalls and Home Good. There's no reason to believe that this will, use will negatively impact uh, property values in the area. Maintenance will be ongoing by the landlord, as we have put into the record with regard to uh, fixing up the parking lot and filling potholes in the spring. You've heard about grease tra trap maintenance by the uh, applicant and uh, the resurfacing the parking lot that will, that will take place once the trenching in the rear has been completed. Uh, the applicant is now screened and uh, located its dumpsters and it will take um, regular maintenance of its facility as appropriate. The building and landscaping is appropriate, that's section 8.3, and again that's based on the fact that it's all existing. If it wasn't worthy of approval originally, it wouldn't be there now. Nothing has changed with regard to that. As far as access and parking, they remain suitable. As we noted, uh, the use of the retail space is much reduced from the prior retail use, and apparently I had cited to the wrong occupant before. It was not casual mail, it was Maddie's. So just for the record, I note that in case I managed to confuse you all. Um, but the, as noted on the uh, application plan, the parking ratio is uh, certainly better with regard to this mixed use than you would have with full retail use there. And the number of parking spaces actually exceeds that which would be required for zoning. Further, we've augmented the parking by requiring that the um, occupants of the Pasta Vida operations park to the rear of the Marshall's building so they will not be using those parking spaces that are heavily sought by um, customers of the rest of the shopping center. And I did note for you that this area, the parking lot, is really not as heavily used as the, uh, the more northerly part of the parking lot. 8.5 requires you to look at uh, overall circulation plan and again I would note that as an existing structure we can assume that it uh, complies with the West Weathersfield Plan of Conservation and Development requirements with regard to their circulation plan. Certainly there have been no circulation issues raised. Um, with regard to Section 8.6, the applicant is working with the various utilities and health department to ensure that any systems, connections, etc., comply with both the utility standards and accepted engineering practices. 8.7, as an existing retail center, there are no new environmental protection and conservation issues relevant to this proposal. Section 8.8, .8, for all the reasons above and the changes that we've proposed in the plan sets revised to 8.15.17, this application is consistent with the purposes of the regional commercial district and your special permit regulations. And finally, under this Section 8, um, or Article 8, Section 8, Section 8.9, as to the other considerations you may ponder under 8.9, none are relevant for this proposed change of use for the rear of the space as the building is existing. So the design, signage, landscaping, lighting, traffic, and parking provisions that have already been deemed appropriate uh, for compatibility with neighbors, including neighboring towns, are incorporated within this application also. You have another section that you have to look at in considering this, and it's uh, Article 10, Administration, Section 10.1.C.9. And with regard to that section, you are able to find that the site plan accompanying this special permit application complies with the regulations as everything but for our um, additional dumpsters and the utility connection are previously existing and we have agreed to locate and screen the two new dumpsters proposed for the rear of the lot. So for all those reasons, the information that we've put into the record with regard to the application and the revised set of plans, we ask that you approve this application this evening. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions and I'll open it up to our uh, commissioner for questions and it will open up to the public for public comment. Uh, my quick question is just for the record again, the hours of operation, and I don't believe you mentioned the days of operation. Ah. I assume the retail facility will be open on the weekend? It will. And looking at Mr. Higgins, what about the commissary kitchen? Will it be operating on the weekend? 
Can you define weekend? Saturday, Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. Uh, currently, the retail operation will be open uh, in conjunction with the other stores in the uh, in the mall. Um, so it's roughly, uh, and again, this is, depends on demand. Uh, the intent is 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. Uh, again, with that's where we'll adjust that on demand. The commissary, right now the plan is Monday through Friday uh, and possibly limited during the day on, on Saturdays. What time? Uh, it, the, commissary. the commissary will maintain during business hours only. So if you can, so uh, if you can just, if you can just, question should go yeah. to okay. We'll have a chance for I apologize. No problem. No problem. If you can give us the hours again. Sure. So the, commiss the commissary hours will be uh, between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., roughly. Uh, we might have a shift coming in a little early, maybe 7 and maybe till 5. The retail hours will be uh, between 8 or 9 a.m. and 7 or 8 p.m. Again, that will depend and be measured on demand. And the commissary is seven days a week? No, the, the retail would be seven days a week. Yep. The commissary intent right now is Monday through Friday and possibly limited on Saturday. Okay. Uh, and my other question on the screening, it, it, are you, you proposing, is it just chain link fence with some slats? Uh, okay, I, I, look, I like to wait for the public comment on that, but I know there's been a lot of PVCs they typically uh, but yeah, we'll open up the public comment, but just for the record, it is PVC and fencing? Or? It, it's actually a cementitious board. Okay. So it's comprised of, um, I think uh, it's cement, cement. The dumpster, the dumpster. I'm oh, I'm sorry, back. wrong yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, so typically a dumpster <laughs> enclosure is chain lead fence with slats yeah. that kind of block it. Uh, we're, we're open to other you know, other materials. Okay. So obviously we, we want to make it as attractive and any additional lighting in the back? Uh, none, none, besides okay. what's currently present. Great. All right, I'm going to open up to questions from the commission. Well, one question I have is the parking lot. We've, we've had problems with landlords um, refusing to or not completing uh, repairs to parking lots. Um, would you have objection if we did this as Landlord is not here. This is not the application of the landlord. It's your application. It's a special condition. I'm concerned about uh, following through and ensuring put some pressure on the landlord to make sure those repairs are actually completed. Well, I should tell you that the landlord is sitting in the audience, and the landlord does care. And I know at this point the landlord has heard you loud and clear. So um, it depends on what kind of conditions that you're talking about. But we have committed with this application, the landlord has said, he will resurface the back area of the parking lot once our construction is finished and will fill in all potholes in the entire parking lot on a regular spring basis. But uh, he's here, and would you like to Thank you. introduce yourself for the record? My name is Leo Field. Uh, I am one of the owners of the uh, Marshall Shopping Center. I live at 35 Revere Lane in Fairfield, Connecticut. We. Um, we fill potholes at that shopping center every spring. Every winter, the, um, the snow and ice expands cracks. There are potholes every spring. We repair them every spring. We had a contract to repair the potholes in the rear of the shopping center. And we were ready to award that contract together with repairing the potholes in the front of the shopping center. We then, at that time, were told that the grease trap for Pasta Vida was going to exit the rear of the building and exit out to Mill Street. And it would require um, tearing up the pavement. So we didn't think it was worthwhile to pave it and then tear it up. Much the same as you people are doing on Mill Street. You're not paving it because you're going to be tearing it up next year. We later found out that the grease trap is not going out the back. It's coming out the front. But the generator, yeah, the, transformer. The, the, transformer the transformer, will be going out the back, and it will be tearing up the parking lot. It is our intention to repair the parking lot after the trenching and after the repair, after the concrete trucks have um, passed over the lot, and we will make that commitment. We have repaired the, the potholes in that shopping center for years every spring, and there has not been an issue. My insurance company, by the way, makes sure that we do that. Any 
any more comments, questions Thank you. from this side? Good. More on this side. Uh, another quick question on the um, to go. Uh, you know, I, I guess I have my concerns that people will be parking in front. Is there any kind of no parking striping on, on that? I haven't been there in a couple of couple of weeks. Well, parking in front of the uh, yeah, shop well, in the just, driveway. You yeah, mean? Is there no parking or anything? Uh, for I don't the, I'm sorry, would you repeat the question? He's concerned about people parking in the parking lane. I mean, in the drive the lane. Right well, in front I mean, that's, that's illegal. Uh, it's also illegal to park in handicapped spaces. I mean, uh, unless I have a police officer there. Is it striped right now, no parking area? Yeah, it fire is. Fire zone? Yeah. It is striped yeah. today? Yeah. Uh, that's the important aspect then. He it's is confirming it is striped that way. Okay. So yeah. Uh, can I make one more comment on the to go? There was some questioning uh, about um, Marshall's um, lease prohibiting the to go parking. The Marshall's lease, the pet supply lease, and the Bedmax lease all prohibit that type of parking. They do not allow reserved parking. The only parking that's allowed in that shopping center is parking in common, where all the tenants have the right to use any parking spaces. By the way, I have seen many shopping centers and more particularly office buildings where you have reserved parking for the CEO or for the president of the company, which are empty and which are not being used. To require a to-go parking would be to really be counterproductive because it would take parking spaces which are designated for customer use, but they're going to be empty for part of the time. For instance, with Pasta Vida, even though they may be open till 8 o'clock at night, I would assume that after 5 or 6 o'clock, the, the great bulk of their business is, uh, Correct. is finished. But all of the other stores, Pet Supplies, Bevmax, and Marshalls, are open till much later. Those parking spaces, if they're designated as to, to go, cannot be used by the other uh, tenants, even when Pasta Vida doesn't need the spaces. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, George. Um, yeah, besides filling those potholes out back and around your building, um, the maintenance back there along the sides of the parking lot has never been that good. It's better now than it was five, ten years ago, maybe. Uh, the, the painting that you did for the mill uh, street units at the beginning of this development was nice, but it's faded quite a bit. I'm not suggesting you repaint that, but uh, you've got to do a better job, I think, back there in, in maintaining. You've also gotten rid of temporary uh, storage units on the north side of the building. Now, I know we're only asking for this one item, but the town staff has indicated some of this kind of thing is needed, like the dumpsters back there are not screened. Now, the applicant here is going to going to screen theirs, and that's good. But what, what does, as the owner, you're here, and you've been down here regarding a development to the south of you? Yes. Uh, and I, I'm pleased that you're, to see you a bit. So, uh, good to see I, you, what, too. What do you have to say about a couple of these? Well, let me first uh, deal with the mural on the back of the building. Uh, a couple of years ago, this commission asked us to remove the graffiti from that mural. And we did. When we removed the graffiti, we also damaged uh, the mural to some extent. Where, where there was graffiti and we removed it, the paint for the mural also um, was removed. I called Karen, and I don't remember her last name, who is the property manager at the Mill Street condominiums, and I asked her if she wanted us, or in conjunction with them, to repair the mural. And, and I offered to pay half of the cost of their mural, because that mural is really for their uh, benefit. And Karen spoke to their board, and the board indicated that with the arborvitaes that have grown between our properties, they didn't see any need for that mural. So thereafter, we at our expense repaired the mural, because we are told that that is the largest outdoor mural in the state of Connecticut. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. And we took some pride of ownership and we decided to repair that mural even though it wasn't our obligation and even though the Mill Street condominiums didn't really care if we did that or not. So let me get back now to the second question, which is the um, um, dumpsters. I will commit to you that I will be coming in to planning and zoning for a application to redo all of the dumpsters, including Pasta Vita's dumpsters, within the next two months. And we will do whatever the application, whatever application is approved, we will do that. Um, we have already I've already spoken to uh, Jeff Higgins about it. Um, we came up with some better ideas of screening and of um, uh, placement of the dumpsters. And we will come back to you. I'm asking you to approve the present um, application so, as, so that they can move forward. But before their construction is finished, we will have a new presentation for you. We as the landlord will have a new presentation for you on those dumpsters. Thank you. I'm glad to hear what you're saying. Commissioner Antonia? Uh, yes, so, so many of my questions have been answered, so thank you, and I look forward to hearing what the public has uh, concerns about. But a question that I have um, is just about the catch basins and the catch basin inserts. It seems I can't help, you know, how I feel about drainage. So I just had a question about uh, putting in inserts in your existing catch basins. What is the purpose of the inserts, and is that going to be a permanent structure? Um, Haley Bush with Fuss and O'Neill again, and the catch basin inserts are for erosion and sediment control during construction, I see. so they will be temporary. There's minimal soil disturbance on this project, so likely those catch basin inserts won't be in there very long, um, hopefully not even enough to accumulate any sediment, <laughs> and then they'll be removed and it'll go back to the way the catch basins look today, which is just open. Okay, so that clarifies it, so that's just a temporary structure. Structure. Temporary. Okay. Good. Thank you. That's all I have. Great. Yes. Just real quick. Sorry. Can somebody give kind of a narrative of the rooftop equipment? And I know we're keeping everything that's there is staying, being some being relocated, others not. But there's quite a bit of additional equipment being put on top. And this is a change from anything that's been in this building because I imagine that's got to be cranking all night to make sure your food isn't really bad. Um, so just, just curious of is this is this the minimum of what you need? Is it, how many like are there codes required in order to follow? Like what's what goes into the sizing and the amount of equipment that's needed up on the roof? So um, essentially. Currently, there's two 10-ton units on the roof. Uh, the idea is to move one of the units, which is the purpose of the screening in the front, just so it's, it's not unsightly to the front of the, of the plaza. The second one is going to be, re is being replaced with a 30-ton unit, which obviously uh, helps air handling a little bit more uh, with, the, uh, with the rear of the kitchen. So You're replacing the second one? Because this one says it's remaining. Well, with the, one of the, the first 10-ton unit will take care of the front, and then the, the I, I apologize, and then the, uh, the, there'll be an additional 30 ton unit that'll be going onto the roof. And then the condensing units, everything for? The, conden uh, the condensing units are for the walk-ins for the refrigeration inside the building. And those will run all night, obviously. Uh, it'll, it'll be on a thermostat. I should add something that I didn't mention before, and that is that the, uh, there is, on these revised plans, there's a small generator that's located in case the power goes out on the uh, loaning dock now. That wasn't on the original plans, and uh, it's baffled, and, but there is one on the uh, loading dock. That will contain you know, sound deadening um, enclosures. But that's an emergency generator? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes, only if power is lost to the building, which I'm sure doesn't happen often. I hope. Just ballpark, how many feet is it from the back of your store to the 
Mill Street condos? Uh, do we have that dimension? So there's that large. I mean, I'm I'm not asking for uh, if I had to, you know, 500 feet, a thousand feet. 200. My guesstimate would have to be approximately 300 feet to the Arborvitaes. To the property line? Are you, yeah. Is that what you're talking about? No, to the Mill Street condo. Uh, no. I'm not sure how far it is from the Arborvitaes to the condo unit itself, uh, but the Arborvitaes are approximately they're over two stories tall at this point, and they're right on top of one another. Well, from the from the yeah, it's from, how much is it? Oh, is it okay? Again, I I haven't seen a plan, so it looks I, like I apologize. Scaling, it looks like about two fifty or so from the back of the building to the build, building to building, building to building. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. If we want to use a ballpark for the conversation, yeah, that's all I wanted. <laughs> I quoted you. I know. Uh, for the record, some correspondence from Town Planner dated August 11th, uh, as we already previously discussed. Uh, so the design review is proposing a wall sign. It has been approved by design review. Uh, and it does include some six comments that um, we've been discussing previously. And there's also a memo, also dated August 11th, from the town engineer with the three comments um, that we previously discussed. So at this time, if there's no further questions from the commission, I'll open it up to uh, public comment. Um, so please, uh, you can step up when you come up, if you can state your name um, and your address, please. Um, can you hear me without the microphone? I, I think we can hear you. Is there a way to? It's, you can, it's, it's moving. Is it? I think it'll fold up. Yeah, it's abandoned. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Great. My name is Lorraine Russo, and I am one of 80 units that currently reside at Mill Point Condominiums. Um, we are located directly behind the proposed Pasta Vida Vista uh, facility. I just wanted to mention that I recently moved to Mill Point and built one of the first universal design homes in the state of Connecticut. It's taken me almost 12 months to build this dream home of mine. And I am gravely concerned about the plans for this food facility. Um, our condos face the back of this business. And on a weekly and daily basis, we are already subject to the noise of the dumpsters and the dump trucks and all of the delivery trucks going back and forth. And we are now about to add another source of that noise. Now let's get rid of this jargon about a commissary kitchen and call this what it is, which is really a food, a small food production plant which is looking to grow past the first two retail stores to five. We've already got the Ford Transit vehicle, which is supposed to be so stealthy, but what's not stealthy is people loading and unloading hundreds of pounds of food on that loading dock. We're going to, in addition, have to have those dumpsters emptied several times a week because of the food refuse and the debris, which could create vermin and other issues. We're going to have um, somebody coming in before and after hours pumping out the grease pits so that way those stay uh, clear and don't create another issue. So this is all extra traffic that we're going to have to listen to and deal with. And believe me, we are close enough that when it rains or snows and the folks are on the roof of Marshalls pushing that snow, they're waving to me and I'm waving back. So we are close enough. And when I ask you to consider this or reconsider this application, I want you to realize that Mill Point is actually our home. Would you want this production facility with all of the things that go with it right behind your home? Would you buy a place to live knowing that this was right behind your home? The vents that are visible to us from Mill Point on the top of the roof of the Marshalls, now we're going to be building another air vent and there's going to be some kind of a transformer on the property, which they're telling us are going to be baffled. I wonder. I have a hearing impairment, severe, and I can hear those trucks 
all week going back and forth behind those shrubs. Imagine now what we're going to listen to with the onset of this business. And I can't even imagine. I don't know if anybody on the council has gone on their website. Pasta Vita probably produces fantastic food. And you know what? A lot of it is fried. So we're going to get to smell just like the Krispy Kreme donuts on the Berlin Turnpike, all that lovely grease every day. Mill Point is our home. Some of us have sacrificed for more than 30 years to build our dream home. And I don't think a dream home should include a nightmare like this. And I ask you when you think about this, and you're encouraged to think about this application and where it's going to be, to consider the fact that a a production plant that's planning to expand and openly admitting to you that they're going to try to go to five stores, regardless of the hours they're saying they're going to keep, is going to make it very difficult for us at Mill Point to have good quality of life. I do not think that whatever the food they're producing would be worth it. And if you're looking for good food, my house is open anytime you can come by. Thank you. Next. Hello, uh, my name is Henry Hornet. I'm a resident and also on the board of directors at Mill Point. And uh, I must say, I think the, the Pasta Vista has got a great concept. And the retail store would be a beautiful addition to uh, uh, the shopping center. But, you know, y you said that this was like, a good neighbor thing but I was just wondering why the letter I have here my registered my certified letter was sent out uh, August 2nd and now it's the 15th so we weren't even given two weeks notice of this happening um, other projects that the, the apartment complex that's being built uh, Chipotle's those were all in the paper and people had advance warning that this was going to happen. Wonder why this was such a secret and we weren't informed until we got the certified letter. Why we weren't informed about this. Now, I read all of this in the business policy and over here where it says business outline, it says the largest employee shift will consist approximately of 20 employees. Well, if the operation at the commissary goes from 8 o'clock to 4 p.m., why do they need shifts? So I'd like to know why, what their thought here was when they say that that's going to be an operation that's going to be just an eight-hour-a-day operation because it doesn't seem like the letter that they wrote says that. Um, excuse me for just a second. <laughs> um, uh, While you're pausing, I, there's a 10-day period for the... Um, is that what, what was required? Okay, I didn't know that, but I just thought a little bit more time would have been a little bit better. And, you know, this time of the year, uh, in August, we have several of our unit owners, they're on vacation. Otherwise, they would be here because everybody in our building is very upset. And like Lorraine says, this is our home. And I have some questions that... Uh, you know, I'm going to read them off, and maybe uh, we could have uh, some discussion on this later. But um, there is a question about, excuse me, I'm all over the place here. Um, I'd like to know what's going to be done to ensure that the smell, like Lorraine described, of this grease pit, I know what a grease pit is, I know it separates the water, but all these vent fans that are going to be put in, and this grease smell is going to permeate our building. I'd like to know what uh, Pasta uh, Vita is going to do to keep that smell from hitting our buildings, because this is all about quality of life. I could picture, th uh, there's, there's uh, going to have two dumpsters emptied four times a week. Are they going to guarantee that these dumpsters are going to be emptied during normal business hours, you know, between the 8 and 4 o'clock? Or are we going to be hearing this stuff at 2, 3, 
four o'clock in the morning. When they expand and they have 20 employees working a midnight shift over there, according to the letter, they have shifts. When they have 20 employees uh, taking breaks at two and three o'clock in the morning, they're not gonna go out to the front of the store to take their break. They're gonna be sitting on that loading dock. They're gonna be talking, maybe they're not gonna be yelling, but every single word that they saying, we're gonna hear, we're gonna be woken up in the middle of the night. This building consists of a lot of elderly people, okay? Handicapped, elderly, people that sold their houses to move here for a good quality of life. We have beautiful places, beautiful condos in there. And this is all gonna be ruined or it's gonna be downgraded because of this uh, commissary processing plant. <clears throat> also, uh, I'd really like to know if limits, if this goes through, and I hope it doesn't, but if, if this does go through, can we limit, are, are deliveries limited? They said once a day for a delivery. Can we keep them to that word? Okay, and if they're only gonna have one truck him delivery, why do they need two dumpsters? Okay, one truck, what are they gonna do? Take the stuff out of the stu uh, truck and throw it in a dumpster? What are they gonna do? They're talking rodent control or pest control. I call it rats. It's gonna develop, they're, they're gonna attract rats with, uh, with all this food processing. Um, also, the screening that you talk about, you, you mentioned screening around a dumpster. I guess that's like a fence so we don't see the dumpsters. But you also talked about screening on the front of the building to hide the air handlers and uh, the compressors or whatever they're gonna be putting up there. Well, nobody thought about what that's gonna do to limit the views that the people have of those apartments that are looking out over the Silas Dean Highway. It's bad enough we look over the roof, but we could look past that. But now you wanna put a six foot high wall and it's gonna block us out even further. You know how ugly, go in the back of the building and see how ugly those walls look like from our side and now you wanna increase it. Not you necessarily, but now, now they wanna have it increased. Uh, so I'm not sure what that's gonna consist of. How are they gonna make that look nice to us if they're such good neighbors? Transformer. I'm not quite sure what they need by a transformer. I know what like uh, generators are, but I'm not quite sure what a transformer, what is it transforming? It's gonna, is this something that's gonna be constantly humming 24 hours a day and we're gonna hear it? Parking of trucks in the back, okay? I don't believe one truck is gonna service five different locations. So what I, what I see happening, okay, and I'm only speculating because this was vague. When it came to commissary operational services, very vague. Everything else about the food preparation, that was all spelled out in black and white. But for some reason, when they got the commissary, the biggest part of this whole operation, the commissary operation, they look at one little, one little paragraph here, okay? And it really doesn't say much, except that the dumpsters, they're gonna have a, pet con a pest control people come in, you know? Um, I, I just don't see it. I, I think there's, there's a lot more that we're not being told. And um, anyways, I, I'm not in favor of this and I hope you deny the, the permit because I don't think it's gonna be a nice blend. The 40 units at Mill Point, you combine our property taxes and it comes over a quarter of a million dollars every year. I hope you please listen to what we have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Public comments? First off, <clears throat> I'd like to say that you guys, when you got a mic in front of you, please use it because it, it was just a personal conversation between you and the person Excuse that was standing me. here. For we couldn't right hardly hear what was being said. Can you state your name? And your oh, name my name is John A. Sword, S-W-O-R-D, and don't screw it up. It's Thank you. 
Okay? All right. I'm 92 years old. And I've known this territory for a good many years. As a matter of fact, I used to be deal with Billy Griswold right across the street when he had his farm across the street, which is, we used to now we refer to the Sage Island Shopping Center. Now they use some other word. But I don't buy this. And besides that, that one fellow there, you know, I did 32 years in the Navy. And we don't call you a chef, we call you a belly robber. Now, the reason we call you a belly robber is because the ship's cook used to go out and buy the food. He'd put half the money in his pocket and buy the other half for the crew. That's how he got the nickname belly robber. Do you have any comments, sir? All right. <laughs> My, I just don't want to see. I don't, I don't believe what I read here. I don't believe it. And uh, you guys are on the zoning board, and it's your job to shoot it down. Is there anyone else from the public? Okay. Hearing none, if the applicant wants to come back up and uh, respond to any of those comments. To some extent, I'm at a loss for words when we talk about this as a nightmarish operation. What you've had presented tonight, and I understand that people can become concerned before they know the facts, but we've told you how this is going to operate. There will not be more than 20 employees on the premises. That includes between the commissary and the retail operation. Um, that's at any given time. Jeff told me he will commit to saying that the commissary will not operate after 9 o'clock at the latest. He thinks it's going to close at 5, but he wa doesn't want to constrain, or even 4 but doesn't want to put any severe limitation on it if it gets a little busier than we anticipate right now. But no one's going to wake you up at night. Nobody's going to be in there at night, except for the cleaning crew, perhaps. But so 9 o'clock, we're willing to put that on the record. It, won't, it will operate at typical business operations. It may be open for part of Saturday, but it may not. Um, it's going to be a quiet operation. There's going to be one van that is going to be parked. That is the van that takes the food from the commissary and delivers it to the other locations. Right now there's only one other location. He's hoping that at some point, someday in the future, there could be up to five other locations. But that's all. It's not going to require, and he's, he'll commit to not going beyond five other locations served by this commissary. They're not in the works yet, or they're not established yet. Whether it ever comes to pass is unknown. Um, but the vans are, it'll be vans that, are, that deliver the food to these other locations when there are other locations. So it's, you know, certainly right now there's only one vehicle going to be parked on the premises overnight as a result of this. Um, the grease trap is not between you and the rear of the commissary. It's in the front parking lot. It will be cleaned. Um, it will have no impact on you because it's on the other side anyway, but it'll be cleaned once a month. There are um, uh, uh, air processing filters that will handle the smells, should there be any that come out of the commissary. And Jeff can speak to that a little bit. And if I can just uh, interject one thing. We actually don't have any fry -alators. There are no deep fryers in our equipment plan. And I, we're, That's we're a actually, major issue. Yeah, so regard. it's there's nothing deep fr fat fried. There's, there's, uh, there's sautéing being done. There is some, uh, some frying being done with uh, what we call a tilt skillet. But there is nothing being submerged in grease. We actually have our we have a, an equipment plan with us that can show you um, there is no fry elators on the equipment plan. Um, deliveries, we're certainly pleased to put a limitation on deliveries to the commissary during regular business hours. Uh, all say seven I, to yeah, I apologize. All deliveries will be coming during business hours. Normally, it's between eight o'clock and two o'clock in the afternoon. Our goal is to have deliveries arrive approximately between 8 and 10 because the food that will be coming in is things that we want to prepare that day because we do make food fresh. Uh, as far as the two dumpsters, one is strictly for cardboard. 
because uh, we do recycle. So one of the two dumpsters is for cardboard, the other one is for um, other trash. Uh, control, any issues about litter? How will you handle we, that, we, we have a plan that every morning that the back of the restaurant stays clean. We're committed to clean up our dumpster spaces. Uh, we're committed to pest control. Uh, which is very important to a food operation because if they're present outside, then they're going to be present inside, which obviously uh, it's a health concern that we can't allow that to happen. So we can't allow pests to be available or, or even present. So we have a very active pest control program. We're very serious about it. We're very serious about, about uh, the health department and, and producing safe food. And obviously a, the pest is one of our main concerns because you can't have safe food and pests. It's not the it's not synonymous. And what commitment will you make with regard to the hours by which or during which the dumpsters would be empty? Dumpsters will always be empty. During, we can control when the dumpsters will be empty. The dumpsters will always be empty during business hours without fail. Um, and I'll even commit to, to, you'll be able to reach out to myself. Uh, Larry Severance is actually going to be the GM of the property. He's going to be uh, available to field any, any questions or any concerns that anybody would have. <coughs> I mean, the last thing we, we want to do is, is make your living situation different. I feel we can bring something to the neighborhood. You know, we'll be happy to give you coupons and, you know, again, help raise any kind of money. We're very community oriented. I understand there's a fear that there's going to be an impact. I can assure you that that impact will be as slight as we can possibly make it. And certainly no more than the current impact with the deliveries in the current uh, place. Uh, by comparison, indeed, the number of trucks coming in with deliveries to you pales. Yes, and actually, if this if this were to be a retail space, the chances of having more dumpsters and more deliveries at all hours of the day actually would increase versus us having a controlled time limit when when th those things would occur. If you had a retail space, then they wouldn't need a variance to go in, and then it would be completely up to them as to when they're going to come in and empty and, and take deliveries. For us, we can control that. So I think the only other comments that were made that we might want to uh, provide some information on is the transformer. The plans do show a location for uh, a transformer, but we're in discussions with Eversource right now, and it may be that they want you to hook up to the existing transformer, which is uh, to the rear of the Marshall's building. Frankly, I don't know anything about the, uh, you know, the sounds from transformers, but I assume there are none. Uh, I don't know if you can comment on that at all. Um, I, don't, I think maybe Nina or Haley could probably. It's not really my wheelhouse. <laughs> Haley Bush with Bus and O'Neill, and um, I can't comment specifically on the actual decibel rating of transformers, but just to be aware that transformers are on pretty much every site development project with every building. Um, the, the condo complex would have a transformer, um, Walgreens, CVS, restaurants. Um, it converts the primary power from the power company to a secondary service that can be used within buildings. Thank you. So I believe that responds to all the comments that uh, were made. We'd be happy to address any others if you think one, of anything else. I think there's just one comment about the screening potentially blocking their view. Uh, maybe you can address that. Oh, yeah. I'm not quite sure I actually understand the comment. Um, you want to be able to see through the, uh, the mechanicals to... We can see This we see the current air vents on the roof of the marshals. That's how we wave to all the people there. We are very close to the uh, facility. Okay. So Henry was saying that if you're building a six foot high, forty foot wall, this is going to impede the view, and the view is part of the selling point of our condos. Okay. We, we qualify as a high rise. All right. Right. The um so the screening wall is proposed in front of our, on, not on the Marshall side at all, where there already is a parapet, a screening parapet on the front of the Marshall side. So it's a, it will be on the front 
portion of this this smaller area it'll be further away from um, your view or your property than any of the other equipment that's on the roof um, if it's okay well let me just say this we would be happy not to build the re screening wall if it's something that you feel would be better not to build well uh, how this, high are the mechanical units the mechanical units themselves range in height um haley are you able to address that i think one of them is actually close to six feet tall okay yes. so one of the mechanical units already is close to six feet tall but if people want to be able to see through them and between them um, we would certainly be willing not to put it up, but that's up to this per commission. Perhaps we just screen the unit itself so it's not 40 feet, it's only just around that unit. The idea is to not have it be visible from the parking lot in front of the building. Actually from Silas Dean Highway. Right, exactly. Right. Which is per our town requirements per se. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and the idea was to keep the, the screen all the way across just to look uniform, but it, we could simply just screen the unit itself, which is. But the units themselves are six feet, so it's not tall. In addition, to, it's not six feet above those units. It's, no, no, it's almost flush. Right, and a, the parapet comes up a couple feet anyway. Am I correct? Yeah. So it would only be four additional feet above that parapet, and above the pet store, the parapet actually goes above six feet to a peak. Um, but we'd be willing just to screen that small area, so the forty-foot view would not be impeded whatsoever. It depends on the commission decides and maybe they can work with the town to absolutely in, 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 in local, uh, I there. I'm not an expert on it I look at Haley or Nina but I'm not sure it would obstruct the view of Silas Dean anyway but that may from a lower unit in in the building I suppose it could okay and, and then just one final question I think it was brought up any any concerns with the noise on those units on the rooftop are those going to be also um, insulated by any any measures or I don't think it's going to be any different from what yeah. currently exists but I'm not an expert and I'd have to ask one of the experts who uh, we don't have anybody who can say specifically but they're uh, to what's out the there. answer what's is it'll probably be similar to what's there what's current okay. just question we do have a noise ordinance so that's there, right there is a, a, noise, a noise ordinance which is on the books Correct. Enforceable is being enforced in the town of Weathersfield, and we're very cognizant of that. That is a very good point. I should have thought of it myself. You are absolutely and right. It better not be so noisy that we have to send the cops down there to measure it. <laughs> you know, a lot of music on the acoustic. Yeah, that's why I like brought it up. It was, it was pointed out. So, um, any other comments from the commission? <clears throat> Uh, if you want to make a motion, uh, sir, anymore? sir, I've heard that yeah. one gentleman would like to. Okay. Yep. You, you have to I come up to the podium. Say your name real quick. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Henry Hornet, Mill Street. Uh, I, I do have one more question. You always mention the time of deliveries, but what about the stuff that's being processed in the processing plant? What are those uh, kind of schedules going to be? Because you just said deliveries. You didn't. You only answered half of the question. Uh, what you did here was Mr. Higgins committing not to operate the commissary, not to run the commissary after 9 o'clock at night. There are no deliveries made in the evening from the commissary. Commiss they'd only be done in the morning. So it's anticipated that commissary will close down 3, 4, 5 in the afternoon, but we've reserved for the record, if we can, uh, that it could operate up till 9 o'clock if it ever got to the point where it was, you know, serving. I mean, night, I, I apologize. I mean, not, there won't be any night shifts, and we can commit that and there'll no be deliveries. no deliveries in or out other than business hours. So business hours being 9 p.m.? And there's no light out back at 4 o'clock. <clears throat> By 4, 4 p.m., there'll be no more deliveries. So we accept we accept deliveries in the morning. Right, and you're not adding lights to the back of your... No, right? we're not adding any lights. No, I understand right? that. Right. And so we're very cognizant of that. Winter, at like 3.30, it's dark. Yeah, we don't... We don't your people are just going to walk 
walk to their cars in the dark? Our trucks will be going out, and our deliveries go out in the morning, and we receive deliveries in the morning. So but don't your employees park in the back? They do, and I and I apologize, but I imagine there's some kind some of lighting safety lighting yes. back there currently, isn't there? I don't know. I just know what. <clears throat> well, obviously, our employee safety is concerning, but I believe there's already some current lighting back there. We wouldn't be adding, adding to any of the current lighting. But that's that raises a good point about employee safety. So, yes, sir. Jim Gothers, uh, I'm in the uh, Unit Two B in 33 Mill Street. Uh, my concern is about the food scraps. I, I didn't hear anything about food scraps, and my only knowledge of food scraps was when I was a kid in high school and I worked in a supermarket. And I know there was a lot of butchery stuff in food scraps. And w where will they go? Are they going to go in that dumpster, or will they be processed out in a safe manner? And as you can see, our biggest concern is that there be no operation at night. We don't want to see this into a, a full-time operation at night. So those are the things that you guys have to weigh, and I just appreciate your consideration. Thank you. And if, if I may respond, sure. the food scraps are, we do have one dumpster that is for garbage. It is bagged up. There is no loose food. Uh, we do clean our dumpster pads. Um, we'll stay clean. It will be clean daily. Uh, so there's no overflow, anything like that. Um, one, again, is completely committed to just cardboard boxes because um, vegetables, everything comes in cardboard boxes. So we do recycle. So one is strictly cardboard. The other one is bagged. There's no loose food scraps. Um, everything goes in the plastic bags. The plastic bags are then put in the dumpster. And I did speak with the landlord, and he indicates that there are downlit wall packs behind that area. So we, uh, we assume it'll be sufficiently lighted when needed for employees to access their vehicles. Thank you. One question from the public. Yeah. I just, Jim brought up a good point, John Sword. Uh, Jim brought up a good point. Right now we have in residence one woodchuck, two raccoons, and three deer, and several turkeys. But I'm, what I'm concerned about is raccoons. And raccoons are a devil, let me tell you. You can have the best plastic bags <laughs> in the world, and they're going to tear them apart. And uh, I just want to give you a heads up on it. We have raccoons in, right in, from they come in out of the meadows, and if, every, in the morning, down at the Morris Farm and the other farmer down there, you'll hear pop, pop, pop. Now, you know what that popping is for? It's to keep the deer out and other livestock. So I just want you to know that you're going to have a problem with uh, rodents and especially uh, <laughs> raccoons. <laughs> They'll do a job on it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any more questions or motions from the we'll Make a motion to close. Right here. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, any discussions? Open discussion. I make a motion. We can discuss it. Absolutely. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve application number 1954-17-Z. And uh, the conditions I'll start with are just staff approval for any of the roof screening and uh, any of the, if there's any concerns with the piping, that that would be worked out with staff. And if there's any hours of operations that need to be worked out, that would be also worked out with staff. Anyone wants to add to that? Feel free. Yeah, but we need to explicitly say 9 p.m. Or would you guys work that so, out after? I, I would state it. Uh, well, what's your motion? No, uh, it's it's in the notes, and that's what I wanted. To no, I I think I would just go with you know, as presented, so that all yeah. of the representations about hours of operation, hours of deliveries, hours of dumpster yep. entering, yep. emptying, all of the things that they have promised, uh, including the paving of the parking lot and the fixing of the potholes, you know, yep. are all part of the conditions. That sounds, that sounds right on the mark. 
in your screening, is the, is the rooftop, does it also include the dumpster as well? Courtney? Yes, okay. yes, any of the screening. Anything? Delivery vans? I'm just making some notes here. I, I had a, I had a, <clears throat> I think I was up to eight conditions, so I'm just going to go through my notes and yeah, make do. sure. Anybody second the motion? I think we're going to do a final, final Six. run of the. Yep. Which uh, you want to, you want to so. So yeah, I'll just go through my notes. Yep. <clears throat> just obviously, first of all, there was a reference to a, a new set of plans and supporting documents dated August fifteenth from the applicant. So that should uh, be in the uh, uh, motion. Additionally, uh, there was reference to the uh, August fifteenth uh, letter. Um, from Alter and Pearson Law Firm regarding the various responses to uh, the questions raised by staff. So that should also be in the motion. And then I had, <coughs> excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven conditions. Uh, roof screening, uh, hours of operation no later than 9 p.m., uh, deliveries during uh, normal business hours, trash pickup uh, also during uh, normal uh, hours. Uh, there was an issue about dumpsters, refuse storage. The only addition on that is obviously we would want our health district uh, to be closely reviewing uh, that to, to address some of the neighborhood concerns, and they will certainly do that as part of their review. Um, there was a condition on the pavement repairs. And then lastly, there was a question about the noise. I would suggest that uh, during the building um, permit process that we get some additional specificity on the rooftop units and some decibel levels, and if necessary, uh, uh, some, some method of uh, sound um, uh, attenuation uh, yeah, potentially so happen. Sheet, so have the yep. decibel level and tear sheet, so it's just approved. Yep, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven conditions. Commissioner Hughes, you accept those? Yes. Is there a second? Um, a second. Well, I'll uh, sec well, I guess I was going to second it and say that, you know, basically add a statement that all of these conditions are integral to the approval. Is there any uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Not opposed? Motion nope. carries. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to go to item four, other business. 4.1, discussion of public act number 17155, an act concerning temporary health care structures. Meeting is still in session. So, yeah, just, just keep talking. Yeah, just keep talking. Here we go. So we're still in session here. Okay. Uh, you should have received in your packet uh, a memorandum for me dated August 11th. Uh, just in summary, effective October 1st of this year, uh, the this new law goes into effect. It's an act concerning temporary health care structures. 
Public Act Number 17-155. Uh, this is uh, sort of generally known as the gr Granny Pod uh, statutes. Uh, in essence, uh, this is a uh, a go around around existing uh, town regulations and statutes, which is designed to encourage um, the additional housing residential opportunities for uh, the elderly as well as impaired persons. Um, not naming any particular names, um, so the <clears throat> it has generated a great deal of concern in the regulatory. Uh, community at the local level in terms of what it allows uh, to happen. Uh, specifically, it basically requires towns to approve these types of things in a matter of 15 days, uh, which is uh, almost impossible, uh, I should say. The normal building permit that someone might file for, uh, for an accessory storage shed, the building department has 30 days to process that. So, 15? Yeah, 15 days. So, um, there was a, a great deal of debate about this but nevertheless the statute uh, came out that way uh, it does the statute does provide uh, an opt-out for communities uh, it would require the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, I think in essence to uh, adopt a regulation amendment or at least take some official action after a public hearing to opt out and then uh, uh, secondarily to that uh, the Town Council would also have to agree uh, to opt out uh, of the particular statute so there is a, a mechanism to, to go through that process. Really what, I'm, um, uh, what I wanted to do tonight is talk about the statute, talk about anyone's particular feelings about it, give me some guidance if in fact uh, you wanted to pursue the opt-out uh, scenario. Um, uh, I, so, so that was what I wanted to talk about tonight. So you do have that opportunity. I wanted to present that opportunity to you and get some guidance. My, I, I'm not particularly concerned about this right now. We have not had really anyone approach us uh, with something like this we've had a couple of people uh, contact us about you know tiny houses that you you know you've seen those uh, and you know we have some we have some rules that they would have to abide by and uh, nobody has decided to pursue it so I, I don't uh, anticipate a, a huge demand uh, uh, for these um, so I don't have a great deal of concern we do have your, some regulations uh, in place I think if somebody wanted to do something like this, we could creatively work with them to go through a process and get something like this approved and take the time necessary to, to do that. However, if we don't opt out, the statute kind of overrides our local ability to regulate. It's different. It's a different. It's a it's a it's a it's a category that it's a category that we it's a category we don't specifically have. We do allow certain. We do allow. Um, I think they're called caretaker residences, uh, which is, but, but you have to have a certain, I think an acre, so not a lot of people are gonna meet that criteria. Um, you know, there is the, the variance option they could pursue, it would take more time, uh, or we could create our own regulation if you wanted to do that as well. As I say, there isn't yet, anyway, uh, a great demand for this in town. As they say, we've had a few people approach us to do something kind of like this, but nevertheless, these, um, these units could be, we have a 200 square foot accessory building uh, limit. Uh, some of these units could be bigger than that. Um, the limit is, two, can't be less than 200? Can't be more than 200 square feet for certain accessory use, uh, structures in our present regulations. Oh, okay. And these, five 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 these could be much bigger. So if we opt out, we have to come in for a special permit? If we opt out, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what we would be bound to do other than the fact that we've opted out of this particular statute, whether we would have to come up with our own option or not. I haven't really researched the opt-out scenario. Some towns are going through the process of opting out. Yeah. Um, Is there an opt-out period? Like, let's say we get one in, it turns out to be just too cumbersome, then we can, like, two years we can opt out? Yeah, I didn't, see, I didn't see any, any date certain um, unless you know I missed it in here unless it's buried in some of the in the finer print so I, I think if maybe we find that this is a problem down the road we could certainly uh, maybe opt out of it maybe rich I don't know if you saw something other than that in there but I didn't No, that, that 
that's the case, yeah. is that you don't have to opt out immediately. Right. I mean, if someone gets one of these and it's like, oh my God, what have we done? Yeah. You know, we can opt out, but they would still be allowed to continue the, the thing that they have. There's a whole bunch of requirements that they still have to meet, you know, in terms of who lives in it and what their, you know, situation is. And, um, you know, they have to be accessible to emergency vehicles. Um, they, they make you post a bond. Water and yeah. Like, yeah. What about these things are temporary? I think they, no they're, they're temporary in the in the in the respect that the person occupying them doesn't live forever. The well, so every know. every home is a temporary. Correct. <laughs> Correct. It's, it's it's like for for like a family in need who has who has someone elderly instead of putting them in a nursing home or something like that. And, that I, and I totally get it. And I think is, the speed thing is is if you have a family emergency, they don't want to have these hurdles in place to with towns having to make you go through, you know. So, you know, you guys are in terms of process very reasonable in terms of time frames con, con, compared to a lot of towns. You know, I tell people that they could get on your agenda in 3 weeks and, you know, folks like the applicants tonight are, are shocked because they go to any other town and they you know it's months, Three months. Yeah. yeah so um you know by, by comparison you guys are we're very good in terms of processing people but nevertheless uh the 15 days is uh you know yeah. extremely ambitious in terms of uh, getting through even the you know, even the building department so uh, but anyway that it is what it is this is a big issue you know the, the idea of uh preventing uh, relatives spouses going into nursing homes and being able to stay you know, within their own home. I understand this. And what my concern is that unless we want to get input from other people in the community, it's a two-step process if there's going to be an opt-out. If we decided to opt out after a public hearing, it still has to go before the town council before there's an opt-out. And if we move for a public hearing, at least we're going to get some input and we can make a decision based upon you know input and we're not looking as if we're we're off the wall someplace and we're just you know making a very very quick decision uh, but I think to protect us and protect the community I think it's a wise idea to move towards an opt-out hold a public hearing and it may be that this Commission decides that we don't we don't want to opt out uh, but uh, at least I think we should go forward with that process. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with my fellow commissioner. Just to reduce our risk, because if we don't opt out by right, they can potentially put at least one in, right? That's my understanding. Or or, or, or more, so or it, I more, mean. Right, depending on how many applications go. Yeah, I mean, in favor of opting out, but that's, yeah. you know. the, the other thing, too, is that, you know, they call them granny pods so that you kind of create the impression that these are for people who are, you know, on a short leash. Um, the the criteria for being able to occupy one doesn't specify you know any kind of age or or condition I mean it could be you know a mentally impaired 21 year old person living in the pod in the yard forever um, is there sort of a restriction on how many it, I looked up a bunch off of the article um, I guess you'd say all of Calif certain section of California doesn't restrict how many people can live in it. They go through the whole thing, but parking about the biggest thing with my concern is, is mechanical and exhaust because in New England we have exhaust from heating and um, other. I mean, I'm not going to put fireplace in here, but that's one thing <laughs> we should consider. But that's not is Peter. Is this what has been put out by the state, or is it does it go deeper into the I don't know the I don't know who was behind uh, pers pers pushing the the bill and the and, and the act in terms of who its supporters uh, were. So I can't really speak to you know what was behind um, what was behind it. Probably the question, people that lease these things. How many yeah. lots do we actually have that are big enough no, that yeah. can actually support this? Uh, well, actually, you have a lot of property in town that could. I mean, it's just basically putting these in your backyard as long as you can squeeze them in there the, most of these are manufactured these are pretty much manufactured pre pre-constructed so if you can get it into your backyard and so we're not fit it in we, we the backyard lines and everything. you can still I, if I understand it right you can still require them to meet the various 
uh, yeah. setbacks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But still, that doesn't, I mean, these are only a couple hundred square feet in size, so you can. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like a quarter homes yeah. for a person. Yeah. yeah. And they come with all the, you know, the pre built connections to water and sewer, and, uh, but obviously you still have to do that. So. I'm going to spend, I, I looked, this is something connected to one of your websites. That's a thirty to forty fifty thousand dollar unit. Yeah, they're not cheap. I no. build that, and then my ancestor passes away in two years. Does that get removed from? Does that have to be removed from my site yes. if I have no one of a certain age living in there? You still have an obligation uh, that the town can revoke the permit if it doesn't if it isn't being uh, occupied by a uh, qualifying individual. And there's a definition of what okay. the individual, you know, in terms of their impairment is. I see um, this more as people renting these structures. And buying you know, you know, I I, th I don't like this because I I look upon it in general as a state doing zoning mm -hmm. for us and uh, takeover sort of, but it's ridiculous what's in here. I mean the um, the numbers are ridiculous. Uh, the requirements are strange. The temporary aspect that many have mentioned here, you know, the the uh, staff reviewing. It has to come in regularly, and there's charges for that. I think we could do a heck of a lot better job of setting up our own at some point. I don't disagree with my colleague next to me that we should basically probably go through this process to opt out, or at least hold hearings and move in that direction. So that's you, you agree story. or disagree with that, what Dan said? What's that? You agree with Dan, or you, did you say I you disagree? Agree. Yeah. said to okay. go through the process of holding a yep. hearing to opt out. Uh, I'd like to go that route, but uh, at least to hold a hearing and go through a process and, uh, you know, bring it to, to the point of the council acting on behalf. I, but I, I am totally against this thing. It just doesn't make sense. I think it's poorly written. I think the requirements are ridiculous. I think the costs are strange. Uh, and I think we got ways of handling it separately, and we're not against that. I think our accessory apartments are an indication that we're willing to work with anybody and everybody of providing this kind of housing for people. And the state provides it right now. They allow you to stay at home. And they, there are all kinds of ways of providing handicapped access to a unit. And uh, all that sort of thing is going on now, as well as good facilities for the elderly. My wife's in a nursing home and has been, and uh, everything is fine. And we, we actually look back at the staying at home that the state has, and sometimes the costs for the nursing are, are absolutely low and ridiculous, and so it's almost impossible to use it. But the state is working in that direction also. I don't know what kind of demand we're gonna see, but if we opt out and there is a demand uh, we always have the right to draft our own regulations right. to meet what is necessary for Wethersfield. Make me more sense. Um, yeah. and, and so I'm not against this. It's just that I can't say right now that I'm universally for every piece of property within the town of Wethersfield, it Could would be a that. definite fit. And I, I think that regulations, if we decided yeah. there was a need, could be drafted to Quick question is so if we opt out, the council ultimately has to approve our request opt out. It's a two step. I hope they so pay we, attention to us, really, when we say things. So so what I so what I would do is I would I would reach out to the town manager first. Yes. Let's, why don't we because we could go through all the jump through all these hoops, yep. you guys, have all these all the hearings we want, and end up with mm -hmm. so why don't we get their pulse on this thing first? Sure. And then we'll go from there. Okay. I can. Uh, I'll do that uh, between that. Yeah, I'll. I'll not, yep. That's a, yeah, I'll uh, do that between now and the next meeting, and we can put it back on the agenda and give you some additional information. Go from there. My, my only thought on the opt out is, as it stands now, there isn't a deadline. But if people start rushing to opt out. The same people that jammed this through this year right, will be back at the legislature next year, exactly. making it more difficult to opt out. Yep. A non opt out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're 100% right. I was thinking that. And I can't think of any other land use proposal that yeah. requires the town council, you know, for us to go say, Mother, may I, right. you know, 
it's a hot it's, zoning regulations. It's a it's a highly highly unusual thing, and as you saw in some of the information, the Connecticut chapter of the American Planning Association opposed the bill. They, did uh, oppose it. they opposed it when it was going through the process and asked that they rethink it and come up with a. You know, they they weren't opposed to the the concept of it, but the way this was being Structure. proposed, it's, it, it's particularly it's peculiar. I yes, agree with it's you. peculiar. So I well, so I think the message I would have is that you guys aren't necessarily against it. You just have concerns about the way it's coming forward, and you would like to get a, a you know, a, a, a reading of the community uh, and more information, bef so you can decide how to how to deal with this in the future. We'll read. For action for tonight, we'll come back next hearing and we'll uh, figure out we'll get a status report we'll and staff. see where where we might go. Uh, 4.2, the uh, community connectivity grant. It's on there for just an FYI. We uh, we did uh, the town council. Uh, uh, asked that we submit uh, a grant application. This is the Community Connectivity Grant Program. It's funded through the uh, Department of Transportation. Uh, it was a, it's a very competitive uh, uh, grant. Uh, it basically was set up to provide communities with funding for uh, both pedestrian and bicycle improvements. When we did the old Weathersfield Master Plan, that plan had a whole bunch of recommendations on intersection improvements, missing sidewalks, you know, other pedestrian and, and bicycle uh, improvements. So we, the engineering department took those recommendations uh, and uh, ginned up some uh, cost estimates and some conceptual plans. So we did submit an application. The maximum uh, grant application per community was 400,000. We submitted a grant in the neighborhood of 390,000. So we, we, we we could, we could have gone closer to 400, but we uh, left some money on three ninety nine. Want to leave some money on the table? <laughs> I we have no idea whether uh, we are going to be successful with this. As I said, it's a highly competitive uh, uh, grant opportunity. It's the first time they've done this. Uh, we wanted to get one in because we're not sure with the state budget whether there will be funding in future years. So we are uh, waiting right now. Uh, if we do get the funding, there will be. Uh, uh, additional public uh, meetings and opportunities to provide some uh, feedback on the specific improvements because we were under the gun to get the application in. Uh, so there is some flexibility in terms of uh, the improvements. But I wanted you to be aware if you see something that we did submit an application and we're hopeful that we'll get some funding and uh, there'll be more to say about that if we do get the funding. The uh, minutes of July 5th. Motion to approve. Jerry, do you have any comments? No comment. I didn't read them. No uh, comments. I'm sorry, I didn't get to them. Uh, looks like we had we'll vote on. four of the six present. So all in favor? That's true. Aye. We well, can vote on minutes even if you weren't there. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, anyways, all right. So, so four, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Staff reports? Uh, we're very busy. There's a lot of lot of stuff uh, happening. Um, the Pelton's building on the Southstein Highway just sold last week. The um, former the New Britain the Candy Pelton's or the current right in. current curtain current Pelton's. That's easy easy for me to say. Um, also, the New Britain the old New Britain Candy Company building on Maple sold. Hmm. Um, is that how you got rid of the trailer down? <laughs> no, that actually uh, just disappeared one day. Um, what else? This uh, the property up on the Berlin Turnpike that you approved the gas station uh, and the uh, self storage uh, did sell as well. Pretty for pretty high price. I was surprised at that. Um, there were some comments back from the DOT on the gas station about turning lanes and things like that. So. That may be coming back to you for further review mm -hmm. um, based on how they respond to those comments. Yeah. Um, if you've been up to Ridge Road, uh, the foundation, uh, it, it, if you haven't been up to the Ridge Road apartments, it, you should just pull in and take mm -hmm. a look. It's um, interesting how it's it, based on the plan. Obviously, when you look at a plan, then you see, the, but that particular site, yeah, you should just, I'd be curious what your, your, uh, uh, Respective opinions are on how that how that's You're turning out. Have positively impacted yourself. It's uh, the 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 site is 
lower, farther down than I, I, I knew it was going to. It yeah, it, it's almost tucked in the back there. It's, it's interesting how the, how the final. So I think it turn, it's, it's going to turn out a little bit less uh, impactful to, the, to some of the neighbors than maybe you had originally thought. So if you get a chance, pop in uh, there. Can you talk to me? And I should not talk to you about this stuff. But the Weight Watchers, people are asking me about that. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me several times. Uh, we've we've been able to keep the state grant to, to the two hundred thousand dollars to to hopefully demolish that building. We've been able to keep that alive given all the state budgetary process. So um, I'm at least happy to say that. But other than that, uh, there's still some talk about something happening there. But there's no speci specificity to those plans. The last uh, specific project was a self storage. You've I think they came in for a pre-application if I wasn't if I'm not mistaken at least to design review but that has gone away and is no longer uh, uh, on the table so um, other than that I, I've been trying to reach out to the property owner to see if we can get something uh, going again but uh, there's no no s details um, the Weathersfield Shopping Center uh, if you, they've got a bunch of vacancies next to each other they're working they're going to design review tomorrow night for a facade uh, a new facade uh, above those spaces they're they're consolidating so they are talking about two big tenants one is K jewelers and the other is a Alta beauty it's a make it's they're down on the shoreline in old Saybrook uh, it Alta beauty it's a no not Alta Vita <laughs> yeah so that that's gonna but they're gonna put a, a new facade on that and 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 uh, Finally, it, I can buy my makeup and rings. There you go. So, mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on? The um, Borden project at the Fun Zone is still trying to get through the MDC review process. The MDC is not sure they had designed their water and sewer connections a certain way, and the MDC is reviewing that. So they're not as far along I think at this point that, as they would like to be I think they were planning on starting demolition uh, right about now so um, hmm. we've let our MDC reps know so uh, they may be checking into the uh, uh, progress on that uh, the old the, the old um, elderly housing up on Jordan Lane across from the Labor Department have a, anybody have a talk the nursing about the nursing home you mean yeah the nursing home. Uh, we've reached out to the owners, uh, Jeff, both the town manager and I. We've had conference calls with them. We've offered to see if we can partner uh, with them uh, and uh, have had uh, literally no response from them. So I don't know if this is, um, uh, I don't know the specifics of uh, how they view this property in their portfolio. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but nevertheless, there is nothing going on there. And as I say, we've, we've reached out a couple times to see if we could help come up with a plan and uh, <coughs> have not it's been. It's not a contaminated site that you're aware of. No, no, not that I'm aware of, but it, the building is now starting to deteriorate. If you looked at the roof and yeah, so uh, they've even had, we've even had some vandalism, you know, kids breaking in the building. And so it's going to become yeah, a bit of a nuisance if, if something doesn't happen um, soon. So, um, but there's nothing. Yeah, they, as they say, we've we've tried to initiate. Um, so, and then you might have noticed the the vet clinic on the South Dean Highway is. Uh, uh, we gave them a temporary uh, certificate of occupancy. Um, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it, look, it turned out okay. There's still some things they're working on. Um, there was a couple of conditions on the screening in the back, so that if you remember, the neighbors came in. Um, they're having some difficulty with with Eversource because it's their property about in the power lines and what they can and can't do back they there. Want to put a screening structure in. Well, we'll see what the final you know. So they they haven't been responsive to them trying to come up with a plan. So anything going on next door to that? That sort of red brick. 440, uh, the brick building. Yeah. We met with somebody uh, last week, and I, th I think they were talking about signing a lease, um, maybe this week. Um, there were two people vying for it, so uh, all of a sudden he's got two interested parties, and he's trying to figure out which. Wasn't it like a Mexican restaurant? We were supposed to get empanadas. There was. There was supposed to be empanadas. Get empanadas. I'm gonna be mad. There was supposed to be empanadas. I think it was actually going to be called empanadas to go. Yes. But they, uh, the costs for putting the they went. equipment and everything, uh, uh, they, uh, went they went by the by. <laughs> they went. I was I was looking forward to empanadas to go. But. So. Uh, Do you have the agenda? 
Uh, oh, the only other thing is uh, the only other thing is Lucky Lou's the the neighbor who has the continuing concerns uh, uh, may be uh, uh, retaining uh, legal counsel to pursue um, options, shall we say? Um, she is planning on attending an upcoming meeting, maybe the next meeting I don't, uh, with, her, with her legal counsel. So there were um, complaints a couple of weekends ago about the noise and re the readings and town attorney had to get involved in, with interpretations of the ordinance with the police department. So uh, there's been a continuing. Uh, What's her position of coming and taking our time up? So trying to get us to enforce it? Trying to get some assistance result, result, re regarding the permit and so okay. well, last, last time we talked about it the plantings were also part of it and I noticed there are trees there is that so we uh, there was a condition that had not been uh, uh, met regarding um, some landscaping uh, to tr attempt to buffer uh, the noise uh, no amount of landscaping it, as far as I'm concerned, was was going to do anything. I did meet with the town uh, tree warden. We met out there with the zoning officer. We looked at the site, trying to determine where uh, uh, some you know arborvitae or something like that could be planted. Uh, we you know surveyed the site, and basically uh, his recommendation was that in order to have any impact, uh, whatever you plant should be as close to the source of the noise as is possible. The problem with the patio is the patio is up four feet uh, and he, he did install arbor five or six foot high arbor varieties which are sort of the standard uh, and they look uh, puny by in comparison to the scale you've got you know huge trees there you've got the elevated patio so the neighbor uh, was not happy with that um, but it was basically planted per the assistance of the town tree warden so um, just so you know, he did. He did. You know, in terms of the uh, uh, intent of the condition, plant. You know, I think uh, ended up like being a dozen arborvitae along that back corner, where which is where the band uh, uh, operates out of. So, um. How about Arrow Road. Arrow Road. We are waiting uh, for the uh, for the judge's decision on, on that. Uh, the lawyers went back in and filed additional briefs to try and <coughs> resolve that issue. And I'm glad you mentioned it because I think it's overdue. The decision is overdue uh, at this point. Um, I, the number of trucks has reduced. We met with the three truck operators and explained to them what was happening. And uh, they, I, they were making efforts to find other homes, uh, but I don't think they're all out of there. Uh, so. Um, gotten better but it's not by any means over yet so thank you no public comment uh, any correspondence nope and uh, the only the only thing we have for the next meeting is the carryover uh, for the first agenda item yep. uh, and then obviously we can fill you in on the uh, public act Final one is uh, <coughs> election of officers. Oh. Um, since Tom Harley's not here, I guess I'd recommend or, or make a motion for Tom Harley, Harley to uh, be chairman again. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, nomination election of vice chairman. Uh, nominate Tony Margiotta. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You posed. You did such a good job tonight. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, and the nomination You're election. You're away from the chairman. Oh, chair. <laughs> Tom, Tom may not come back. And oh, oh, good uh, nomination election of Clark. 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 Um, I'm, I'll nominate Rich Roberts. Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to the authorization of signatures, authorization of Peter uh, Gillespie to sign notices of commission. Uh, so moved. And authorization of Derek Gregory, Gregor to sign notices of the commission. Okay, so move both. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, do I have to do that for all in favor? Yeah, so moved. Yeah. All right. In a second. And so, okay. Uh, uh, Ex-officio members, uh, Jeff Bridges, town manager. 
So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? An appointment of Capital Region Council of Governments, uh, the nomination election of rep and alternate to the Regional Planning Commission of Craig. Who is that current? James. Very, uh, are you attending, James? In spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. I like that. His middle initials are RPA. You still interested in doing it? Uh, anyone else interested? For Watch out, Jimmy. They'll go astray if you don't go down there and check. Right. When do they meet? I mean, if this dude isn't going to go. It's not bad. I, mean, it's good. I think it's good for you know, meeting all the croc people. You know, yeah, I'll do it. If you don't even really have to go. Wednesdays, I think. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's on noon Wednesdays time. when? I think it's like noontime yeah. in Hartford. They do meet sometimes at 8 5, but it's usually an earlier meeting. Okay. If it's noon, I can probably make it. Your attendance level. If it's at probably. night, I'd have trouble. Hmm? Yeah. Your attendance level will probably be. Yeah, I mean, I'd at least. Yep. Increase attendance level by infinity. I'll nominate. <laughs> <laughs> at, the very, at the very minimum. Very, very good. All right. Nominate Here's Ryan as the forty. Jimmy knows all those friends are. All your computers are cracked. He's I'll, not going to teach you this. Just special handshake. Uh, <laughs> the Freemason handshake. No. Uh, I get I'll second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. <laughs> We should make Jim the alternate so that he yeah, can it's not we, go. we have an alternate. In case I can't go, I'll say. All right, we'll make. Uh, I'll nominate Jim as an alternate. Second. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 You opposed. Uh, appointment, Economic <laughs> Development and Improvement Commission. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, Your reports yeah. have been invaluable. I, I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I get lunch once a month. Oh, that's great. I'll make a motion for Dan. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Get Dan lunch. Finally, review of commission rules and procedures. Commission rules and procedures to be readopted. Move we readopt our rules Second. and procedures. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> All right, motion carries. Right, you forward, forward me all the notes. I got to be kept up. Do <laughs> <laughs> that. I'm already on the website. This is great. Meetings usually run four, four and a half hours. Yeah, <laughs> minimum. You'll get real <laughs> Hey, when I run the meeting, it's 9 o'clock. Oh, we're good. Any uh, motion to close with the motion? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye.